During the battle of Badr, a few people were killed from the kuffar. The Muslims were victorious. One of the people was the father of him, Utbah. He was killed. Another person was Mut'im uh, ibn Adi, the father of Jubayr ibn Mut'im. Mut'im ibn he had a, Jubayr had a servant, a slave, a very strong Abyssinian slave by the name of Wahshi ibn Harb. Wahshi means savage. Harb means war. The savage, the son of war. This is what the, the type of name the Arabs used to give to their servants because they wanted them to fight, to be warriors. And after the battle, they said to him that if you kill Sayyidina Hamza, because he was involved in that battle in killing them, he said, if you kill him, we'll set you free. This man had one mission, to be free and kill Sayyidina Hamza. During the battle of Uhud, all he was doing was looking for Sayyidina Hamza and he became successful and martyred Sayyidina Hamza who was the cousin of, who was the uncle of the Prophet who was his confidant, his best friend from childhood, who was also his milk brother. They were milked together by Suwaiba. So very close relationship. The Prophet was devastated seeing that. And then not only he killed him, he opened his chest because him wanted to eat the liver of Sayyidina Hamza. That's how angry she was. These are the type of people the Prophet ﷺ dealt with. You think times are tough now? You think they're tough? Look how he dealt with these people. But she opened the chest and he told the story to the Prophet ﷺ. He opened the chest of Sayyidina Hamza and then him bit into that liver and then she vomited it. She couldn't swallow it. And this is what Qad Iyad said in Ashifa that she vomited that because Allah made her vomit. Because of the power of the blood of the martyrs of Sayyidina Hamza. Ha Hamza, if it was gone that inside of her body, if that blood would have gone inside the body of him, it would purify her from every sin that she has ever done. That's how powerful that is. That's how powerful the blood of Sayyidina Hamza was. But then again, conquest of Mecca. They come, they conquer Mecca, everybody, all these guys flee. And he goes. Wahshi leaves and he goes to uh, Taif. When he goes to Taif, and then people start becoming Muslim and coming from Taif. And then they say, why don't you become Muslim? They said, I? Me? I'm a murderer. My name is on the list. The Prophet gave a list of the war criminals when he entered. He said, these are war criminals. And Wahshi said, I'm, I'm one of those war criminals. There's no way I'll be forgiven. I write a letter to him. Can somebody deliver? So send the letter to the Prophet Would I be forgiven? Would I be forgiven? I've done all these wrong. I killed Sayyidina Hamza. I've done all these wrong in my life. And the Prophet could not even answer. Then God sends revelation. For who? For Wahshi. The biggest enemy of Islam. The murderer of Sayyidina Hamza. Allah is concerned with Wahshi. And he said, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Except for those who make tawbah, who believe in Allah and they do righteous action. Allah will turn their wrong action, their evil action into good action. And indeed, He's forgiving and He's full of mercy. Revelation comes because of wahshi. And then the message is sent to him. And then he sends another letter. He said, those are lofty things. I don't even know how strong my iman is going to be. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do these great actions, amal and salihan. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all of that stuff. Then the Prophet wants to say something, but Allah doesn't allow him to say anything. Allah wants to respond to Wahshi's letter. To Wahshi's letter. And he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ Allah does not forgive أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ If you associate partner with him. وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَى But he forgives anything else. Allah will forgive anything else. As long as you don't associate partner with him, he'll forgive anything else. وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ 
فَقَدْ دَلَّ دَلَالًا بَعِيدًا And those who associate partner with Allah, indeed they have gone astray. And then he sends a letter back and he says, But I'm a mushrik. I live all my life with shirk. Look at this. Look at the patience of God. Look at the patience of God. Right? One of the Urdu poets said, He said, Ruz guna karta ho, wo chupata hai apne rahmat se. Me majboor apne adat se, wo mashhoor apne rahmat se. By day I sin, but he veils my sin out of his mercy. Because I'm bounded by a state of disobedience, but he's bounded by his mercy. Wa rahmati wa si'at kulli shay. And then he says, but I was a mushrik. Is, is, is there hope for me? I want to know if there's hope for me that I'll be forgiven. And then Allah sends down another revelation. In this, for us, we have to really reflect. This is how Allah is dealing with one of the worst human beings on this planet. And he says, يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَةُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Oh, servants of God, who have wronged yourself. In other words, you can't wrong me. You can't wrong God. You have wronged yourself. Do not despair from the mercy of Allah. Don't cut yourself from the mercy of Allah. Don't cut yourself from the mercy of Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الظُّرُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Because Allah forgives all sins. He forgives everyone. Everything that you have done, Allah can forgive. Because He is غفور. He is forgiven. That's, that's one of the names of Allah. Then, Wahshi came and took shahada. It was then that he came and he sat in, in front of the Prophet wasallam, and he became Muslim. And this is a man who was one of the greatest enemies of Islam. But look what he did. The story doesn't end there. The Prophet loved Wahshi. There's a hadith that people misunderstand. When he took the shahada, the Prophet's face was down, he looked up and he said, is this Wahshi the Abyssinian slave? And he said, Naam, yes, Ya Rasulullah. And he said, how did you kill Sayyidina Hamza? And he told the story. And the Prophet cried and wept. But he gave him the shahada. And he said, tell Wahshi that try not to cross in front of me. And this is because he loved Wahshi so much. Because he said, every time if I see him, I would remember the murder of my uncle. And I don't want Allah to punish him for that. I don't want Allah to punish him for that feeling that I have in my heart. This is why he is وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That he was not sent but a mercy to all of creation. And Bahshi said, he set on this path. And what did he do? Musaylamatul Kazab. After the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of these people rose up. They said, we are prophet, I'm a prophet. I'm... But the biggest one was Musaylama. He had an army, he had massive amount of people behind him. And he claimed that he's a prophet. One thing that about the prophets is miracles. They say the prophet wasallam, whoever head he touched over, it's in the hadith. All of the people, he rubbed their head as a young children. Until they died, they had full set of hair. Musaylam al Kazab, whoever he rubbed over their head, in their youth, they lost their hair, they became bald. It's one of the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ. But Wahshi killed Musaylam al Kazab. He is the one who destroyed one of the biggest enemies of Islam right after the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, in my jahiliya, I killed the best of the believers. In my Islam, I killed the worst enemy of this religion. And this is why we have to make dua for those people. We have to have mercy. This is why if, if you want this kind of akhlaq, this kind of character, تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَخْلَاقِ Allah. Take on the characteristics of God. Look how Allah treated this man. Look how patient he was with him. Look how much sabr went into this. Revelation came. This is not, this, look at what he means. Look at the, the uh, asbab al nuzul These are all because of this one man. His, his yearning. Because Allah wants to save that one person from the fire. And yet, nobody cares about people going there. People going in groups to the fire now. And nobody wants to stop them with mercy, with love, with gentleness. 
And may Allah make us from amongst those people that we take. Tahallaku bi akhlaqillah. Amin. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.